it's not so much about to do. So is that good or bad? Well, I so wasn't even getting worse. <laughs> me personally. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm just being. I'm just trying to put it out there I as know. far as the different angles to which we could look at it. Like I haven't even thought about what I would do so much as just trying to figure out how to <clears throat> at least how to identify what the what the dilemma is. I just thought of something. So okay, we all need clothing and we all buy clothing <clears throat> because of how. Clothing industry is set up. You know, you have ninety five percent. Could even be higher now. Ninety five percent of clothing that's here is coming from old somewhere world, else, like China, right. um, India, or India, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, so, who's to say that 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 clothing isn't being picked by you know like so, we're well, not seeing that we're not seeing like it's like we don't know where our food comes from because our shit is so yeah. so at least in that reality you're seeing I'm not saying like okay there's not like a fucking spider web of controversy yeah. within that but <clears throat> you're seeing exactly where it's coming from right. I'm sure this well this is sure this well, yeah, there are all kinds of stories. It's from Ghana, but that's the point. Right. Well, my, well, that's the point. My thing, you asked me, well, go ahead. I'm trying to, I'm, I can't word it, because it's like, okay, there's a problem with that, but what about the shit that you bought from H&M? Well, like, this shit, is what... Like, she, that's coming from the same, someone well, picked that fucking cotton. Well, when she asked me what I think, you know, the same when she just asked you what you think, I said, I think it's a good thing. I said, this like, if it's good in jobs. Right, right. Something to do and creating a market creating, of trade, yeah. Of, of in trade, Africa was, that was my know, first response. Was that like, um, she would she said, you know, like she was uncomfortable for all of the symbolic, you know, things right? Like and I, I, I understood that, but that wasn't my first reaction. My yeah. first reaction was, well, if it's giving them jobs and blah blah blah. So, I guess to answer your question, what would I, what would I do? Um, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to say, you know what, hey, because I just see, you know, for one, you know, the whole concept of having a company, and especially a clothing company like you were talking about, where pretty much everything is made by somebody who is, you know, in a lower, for lack of a better word, a lower station of life, wherever you find it, it's always going to be somebody who's making the clothes who is right. not as well off as you. Like, you're going to have a hard time really finding, you know, someone with a college degree, you know, who's been to school and spent a whole bunch of money and, you know, who, who's paying, you know, a thousand dollars in rent. You're going to have a hard time finding people like that doing the work to make this shirt. So it's not going to be an equitable, you know, situation for all parties involved. There's going to be some hierarchy and some people at the top of the chain and folks at the bottom and that's going to imply that some people don't have it as good and that's just sort of built into the system so the question is if you don't feel comfortable with that you're going to have to find a way to basically not be in that system like find something else to do because this is what it's going to be it's, it's just going to be that there's going to be people who pick the cotton there are going to be people who pick the tomatoes and you know what I'm saying, like for all the things, the shoes that you wear, you know what I'm saying, like it's just going to be inequitable fundamentally. But that's not to say that people should be abused. That's not you know what I'm saying. And, it's and we, yes, yeah, and we don't see abuse. At least we don't exactly, see it. Yeah. We don't see the abuse. So you know, maybe we can say that they're all right. But it's um, but yeah, you said fair trade, and I was saying her just earlier. I was saying it's it's a trade. But it's not going to be a fair trade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's fair in the sense that it's it's not like they're not making slaves out of them. Yeah. But it's not fair trade in the sense that I get just as much out of this as you. Right, right, right. It's, it's going to be less on their end. Right. And with that in mind, I think that if you choose to do it, then that's something that you buy. You know, that's a part of the package. You know, like you choose to make the clothes. There will be people who are. You know, um, less for 
fortunate or whatever than you. But if you can mitigate for, you know, abuse and all those kind of things and just make sure that people are well taken care of and that there's a, they're getting paid whatever they agree to be paid and you know you know they're treated like human beings and I think that's that's the more or less part of yeah. the whole moral, moral thing and so it's it's better than you know putting them in a coal mine you know it's better than you know you know making them work in some sort of polluted factory or whatever it's, it's better than and that that's that's where you get that moral component where it's it's more moral than other situations. Mm -hmm. And because of that then maybe you can feel good about it. Mm -hmm. But it's not gonna be even. So what would I do if I were in the clothing business? Well you are, really, by association <laughs> by extension. By, extension. <laughs> by uh, being Yeah. I I would I would I would say that that's a better that just on the strength of what they showed. I know they probably want us to see the best, but on the strength of what they showed, that's it looks better optically than a lot of things I've seen on other kinds of videos. You know, where you see people working in sweatshops and you see. I've been to a sweatshop. You know I used to work kind of place yeah. here in New York, <clears throat> in New Jersey, New York. and there was a fucking like fourteen year old there. Wow. You know and. You don't have to go far to experience that. Um, but it's just that we, it's just cheaper to manufacture overseas. So, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. You know, and, and they probably don't have the laws. Like, right. the New York fashion industry went through a lot of, like, they had fires, massive fires back in the day, 19th century, where a lot of people died, and that's what they made workers, you know, right. laws. All that sort of thing. There's a great documentary about the fashion industry and its like evolution and decline. But right. um, it's definitely. I think it's just being more aware of the steps and the work involved, you know, rather than. I mean, yeah, like no one wants to be out in the sun picking fucking cotton. I mean, my people pick cotton, so I have a sensitivity to. I know that shit hurts. Yeah. It hurts your hands. It hurts your whatever. But but back, so. but by the same token, if we didn't have that, if my people didn't have that, then we wouldn't have ate. You know, because that's how we were sustaining ourselves. So there's that. However, I know it's not. I guess everyone's gonna have their own experience. Sensitivity with it. I just kind of feel like. I, I think awareness is good. We should be aware, and I and I, I think that we should be trying to, like I said, mitigate the damage, reduce it, right. as opposed there to is an, uh, as opposed is, to eliminate. It, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it needs to be this like people don't need to be suffering at work and right. killing themselves right. to fucking make your shit. Right. That doesn't need to be happening. It's not that serious. Um, but if we if we were to use the metric of being uncomfortable, like it would make it would make me very uncomfortable to think about all the things that I've enjoyed that I want. Right. Um, to think about where they've come from. So I, I can't as I am uncomfortable with some of the images, but like personally speaking, like I don't I didn't do my research on these pair of jeans or on the shoes that I got. Yeah. I just didn't do it and for all I know somebody it could be some really horrible stories. Connected iPhone. To, yeah, to the, the iPhone. He, he referenced the iPhone. Yeah, the iPhone. You know? And and look, I'm shooting so this right I'm now on an iPhone. an iPhone. We every we all have an iPhone. And we know where that shit comes from. We know where that yeah. shit comes from. And and this computer. I mean there's so and many the computer. That, um, <laughs> Freaking everything. So everything in this that, room. That, that, that sort of could be Revolting, you know. Yeah. So the way that you act about the cotton, someone in fucking China can be like, "Oh, you, f you know, yeah. you fucking assholes!" Like here you are doing an argument. I lost my like, fucking finger. Or something, yeah. Like, like, you know, they could have. They're having their own emotions. No doubt. With it, you know? I mean, they might see the apple and like. Yeah. It could trigger like some crazy some shit. Some PTSD. Just like. 
you see that those images, what it triggers for you. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And when I see, like, when I go to St. Croix, when I go home, and, like, I grew up on an island where you can ride around the island and see sugar, old farms, sugar plantations from slave times, you know. And it didn't, it, I wasn't, I must have been an adult before I realized, like, what that really meant, you know. And there's, like, a, a plantation that we would go to as tourists. It's called Wim Ray Plantation. And um, Quinn Great House, and it's um, it's it's a tourist destination. It's fun, and you know you go there, and you know you look around yeah. and stuff. But there are these uh, sugar mills, and they look like these little cones with like a plateau on the top, and there's like a windmill, or whatever. But they're all around the islands, and um, it's uh, it's something that like in some ways it has a a beautiful and tragic kind of connotation because when you see it you think about oh it's it's it represents old times and it's it shows you that this is an authentic kind of island and, you know it's like you know you drive around and you see oh there's a thing and you almost like feel happy that you see one because it's like it reminds you of the history of the island and that's a good thing and then at the same time it's like then you start to think about the history of the island and you know and then it's like it's a bad thing so it's like you it's mixed, you know, like the feelings, yeah. and um, and then like sugar cane was like, I mean, cotton really is a did a, the West Indians would have been glad to pick cotton because the sugar cane was the, um, the the in the diaspora like the sugar cane slaves were had the highest rate of death out of all the slaves, you know, everywhere because that work was so physically demanding, and those things are so heavy and real tall that they would chop and you know. Stuff and carry them to the sugar thing, and the the slaves in the West Indies and uh, wherever they grew sugar cane died like their their life expectancy was like forty or something like that, and everybody else like picking cotton you know might have had like a higher you know life expectancy. So like I'll see sugar cane and like and I I'll get that sort of you know I'll get a little tense if I think about it long enough. But, like you said, it's all relative. We all have triggers and things that, you know, we might see that could sort of, like, in, inspire some sort of visceral kind of thing. But at the same time, that's what makes, that's what we have in common. It's like, there's always something to be, you know. Relatable. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what do we do with that? So instead of saying don't pick cotton, maybe we could just say, you know, let's try to make it as accommodating and humane and, you know, respectful as possible, even within that historical context that maybe they could pick the cotton for the clothes, but we just make sure that, you know, that they're treated in a respectful way that could give them some, you know, um, dignity, some dignity and they, they can earn, you know, a living wage for whatever their countries, you know, whatever they, they need for their country. You know, maybe it could be that as opposed to they need to, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm coming from, like I said, the more or less argument, you know, as opposed to the either or, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your comments.